Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. I hope you all are staying safe and doing great out there. So let's start our uh, next topic, <clears throat> which is designing for web, because we are talking about websites, how to upload content on websites, and how websites are different compared to the print medium. So I hope you can see this PowerPoint presentation on your screens, and I'm seeing it on my screen as well. So designing for web. Um, we have talked a lot about uh, how to design for uh, print medium. But uh, when we talk about designing for websites, it's slightly different compared to the print medium. So um, what we are going to learn in this module is uh, how to design for an audience who is um, uh, globally connected, who use uh, internet, who use web pages, how to make navigation easy, design for the screen, not for the paper. And um, because we are working for online medium, speed is very much important because uh, you have to work on your speed. Why? Because um, in online technologies, everything is happening so quick. Uh, because everyone is uh, breaking news stories and they are updating their websites constantly. So you have to be more vigilant compared to the print medium and designing for the future. So let's start. These are some of the websites you have to analyze that how they, they work. I will upload these links as well. Huffington Post, the Washington Post, Express UK, the Times, the Express Tribune in Pakistan, and the news. So we'll look into two different websites. Like, let's see, uh, let's look at the Huffington Post. So let me open uh, Huffington Post website. <clears throat> so I'll stop sharing this and I will share the web page for Huffington Post shortly. So you will see um, Huffington Post is entirely, um, it, it's designed entirely in a different manner compared to any Pakistani website. So let's look at Huffington Post. <clears throat> so when you go at the Huff Post, you will see their page. So meanwhile, I will, show you uh, a Pakistani example, the news.pk. Pardon the speed of my internet and computer because uh, I don't know, it's a little bit stuck. So so here is the half post. If you see, uh, it's on your screens. So you see, uh, they have created hyperlink even for their uh, headline. So let me take the if you see, so this is the hyperlink. And it is uh, a news about a stress test for Biden's anti Putin alliance. So if you click on the picture so it's a link as well probably it will open up more pictures and then there are tiles with the stories about politics entertainment us news us news and sports so different tiles are created created so if you see so it's quite this page is quite differently designed so now let me open another uh, website which is a pakistani News.pk, probably that's the website of the news. So we we'll look that. Oh, that's not. Let me see. News Pakistan. Okay, it's the news.com.pk. So let's open this website as well. So you'll see a distinct difference between these two websites. 
So though they also have created, probably they have created link with their headline as well, but they are more into advertising stuff. They have created some tiles. They have a section on trending on social media, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the two examples. They have added videos as well. It's um, surprisingly, it's, it's quite well designed website. It's not that much bad. I was expecting it a little bit something else, but compared to this website, it's nothing. So coming back to our topic, So, so um, let me share the PowerPoint again. So these are some other websites. You can look at them by yourself that how they are different compared to uh, other websites. So, uh, <clears throat> so Jacob Nicholson, Dr. Jacob Nicholson believes many news sites are not putting enough effort into researching what users actually want. So how you'll get to know that what user want. So the important thing is that you have to understand uh, the nature of your users, uh, how they are using websites, why they are using websites, and what type of websites they are using. So you need to understand your audience, basically, or the users who are using the website. So uh, new sites must spend more money on user testing and research in order to provide what it is that users want. That means you are not simply putting content on websites, but you are spending a lot of money to understand what your readers or users want to have on that website. So he suggested that too many new sites are grasping for answers, adding a city guide because that's trendy, but not having the research to back up the local market consumer demand. So you can assume that people want this, but until and unless you conduct a research, you won't get to know that what your users or your readers want. So the New York Times on the website is successful because it has a clear picture of who it is pitching at. So they exactly know who's their readership and who is visiting their website. So editor-in-chief of New York Times Digital, Rich Madison believes that he caters for an online audience that is more extended than the one the printed newspaper reaches, but with smaller characteristics. They are intelligent, well-educated, they are sophisticated, entrusted, and involved in the world. They know more compared to the people who read newspaper. You need to understand that because knowledge is at their fingertips or on their computer screen. So here is staff aim to reflect that in the design, it is subtle. It endeavors to communicate clearly and it draws attention where appropriate without shouting. So in the New York Times website, if you look at this, succeeds because it knows what it is doing. So it also makes navigation easy. The publication aims to ensure that people can find the information they want with as a few clicks as possible. So this is one example of New York Times. You can see it's very clear, very concise, and finding information is very easy on New York Times um, website. So modern priorities. So <clears throat> in 1999's Press Times edition, the magazine of the Newspaper Association of America, Susan Miller said, designers should identify the typical user's priorities with modern browsers. So it is relatively easy to track the most frequently visited, visited categories or types of information. So now it has become very easy. You do not have to put a lot of effort to understand what your audience or your readers or your surfers want. So do not make users dig for these nuggets. Locate the things you do best first, followed by those at which you have mere priority with other sources. And in a nutshell, work hard to give your audience the type of information they actually want and make navigation around your site as easy as possible. Your website should not be cluttered. It should not be filled with a lot of content. So there was a research conducted at Stanford and Pointer Institute, and they showed that people average six minutes at a new site. So that is too much, six minutes. I believe they spend not more than two minutes. So designer Mario Garcia pointed out that the typical surfer who finds a site 
will spend about 20 seconds on a page before deciding to go elsewhere or click on an internal or external, I would rather say, link. So brother, brothers tend to click in and depart if they cannot find what they want. So this means designers must make navigation easy and maintain a simple design and remove any clutter, which I have told you earlier. These are some of the tools, popular searching tools. So they have one aim, helping people find information and their design reflects that aim. So the design is the epitome of clarity and simplicity. One thing you need to understand on the website, you'll understand all the tools that how to make your website more searchable, how to uh, make your website more visited by the readers. And this, is, this is not the question here. The question here is to understand what is the logic behind all the, these tools. So readers want information, not clutter. If you will make difficult for them to find information, definitely they are not going to come back on your website. So, um, so technical dazzles are very much important to understand that you do not create technical dazzles, pointing out that some of the dullest websites such as online telephone books rank among the most popular because they are simple. Simplicity wins and you need to make your uh, website more simplistic. So the New York Times, the web has adopted a similar approach and they know that their web readers are impatient and they do not have a lot of time to spend. So what they do, they try to get people from place to place on the site as simply and efficiently as possible. So, so for Michelin, this becomes a balancing act. So it is said that we have tried to maintain some ability for the design to reflect the ongoing news judgment of New York Times journalists. So while making sure that people can find the information they want with a few clicks. At the end of this PowerPoint presentation, we'll look into the website of New York Times. So the internet providers, as an example of overwhelming information overload, estimates vary as to the size of the part of the web that search tools can index, but it is safe to say it is growing quickly. So in July 99, uh, Steve Lawrence and Lee Kills uh, published a research in Nature magazine showing the publicly accessible part of the web contains about 800 million pages, up to from 320 million in December 1997. So in February 2000, they estimated the local had reached 1 billion and was growing. And let me tell you one thing, the internet or the information we access, that is the tip of the iceberg, the rest of the information is hidden. And that is in the deep web. So a company called Bright Planet has uncovered that cause the deep web and calculates that it might be up to 500 times larger than the unknown surface web. So whatever we look, that is the surface web. So in a white paper published on the web in July 2000, Dr. Bergen wrote that much of this deep web contained quality content. So there are literally hundreds of billions of highly valuable documents hidden in the searchable databases that cannot be retrieved by conventional search engines. So uh, one thing you need to understand uh, that what is the difference between news website versus marketing websites? Because of the web huge size, most sites are shouting their wares, trying to attract attention. So it is like being in a soak or bazaar with um, traders shouting uh, and, 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 and pointing out to different directions uh, that you need to visit this website, you need to read this content, you need to look into this content or that content because there are too many websites. So websites copy others, successors and excesses. Uh, too many fall into the trap of employing large graphics and loud backgrounds, colors because they think they are attractive in order to sell their product in a better way. So Nensel believes that online sites should resist the tendency to crank up the volume on their pages. A new site's homepage should not be seen as a marketing tool like we have seen in, in the case of news, but as a source of quality and reliable information as we have seen in the case of New York Times. So <clears throat> as Roger Feinder noted in his book, the internet is simply another form of evolving human communication. 
So radio did not replace newspaper as a source of news. Similarly, television did not replace radio. So the various media simply evolved into new forms, but people tend to think of new media in terms of old, just as they think of new ideas in terms of earlier concepts. So what you have to do, uh, you have to basically um, uh, employ navigation guides that how to uh, make your, um, your um, website or the news um, uh, page more accessible and it should be easy for your uh, for the uh, for the navigation of your readers so website do not share a grid structure um, you need to understand this uh, and um, <clears throat> unfortunately they do not share a widely agreed upon structure like we actually uh, share in in term of newspapers and readers of websites have long since become used to the dull fiction uh, of having to return them, uh, them themselves with every new website. So Lynch points out that the computer screen offers few contextual cues to the depth and the breadth and context of information offered in other pages of the websites. So if the readers are uh, to understand how information on a page relates to the rest of the websites, designer must provide that information for them on every page of the website. Predict design structure. So pages in a well-designed site should share a consistent, predictable design structure, a blueprint or a design grid that fixes the terminology or location of landmark navigation and editorial links. Miller believes uh, the single biggest challenge people face in navigating a website is figuring out what it contains and where to find those items because there is too many things on a website. So she, she suggests employing home pages that are mostly indexed or give users a comprehensive vertical index down uh, the left side of the home page. So this website index sitemap should cover more than the typical front page newspaper index because a reader searching for an item has physical access to the entire newspaper. While when you are using a um, website, you do not have physical access to the whole website, you have to search for the appropriate link to find that item. Use short summaries and paragraphs. That is important uh, for your newspapers. Uh, short summaries actually uh, save the time of your readers and it gives them a good idea what this story is all about. Uh, there is one example of Washington Post. You can see um, news items are divided into small tiles like shapes and it's easy for your readers to find these, these news stories. So one thing uh, you have to understand that you are designing for the screen, not, not for the paper. It should be slightly different compared to the screen design. So most computer monitors are tiny compared with the broadsheet or the tabular newspaper page. And similarly, now a lot of people are reading um, news stories on such kind of small devices like mobile phones or their iPads. So you have to understand this, uh, that uh, their uh, concentration level varies when you are on a larger screen compared to when you are a smaller screen or a medium sized screen. So you have to understand. Speed is the essence because everyone is breaking stories, uh, all right? So people are prepared to wait for information that is vital to their lives, but such information represents a small part of total on the web. So editors should aim to get text on screen as soon as possible so users will have something to read uh, while they wait for images to arrive. So go for what's quick, um, not what's fancy in design, because uh, breaking stories on web is quite competitive. And your competitors are breaking stories while you are waiting for visual or the images so uh, you cannot actually content um, uh, remain uh, contented on uh, only um, uh, visuals or uh, pictures, but you have to uh, look for smaller text, smaller uh, pieces of information that actually give something to your readers. So that is very much important. So coming back, so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, um, the New York Times uh, design.
Unfortunately, we need subscription for that, but still I'm going to share the web page. So we'll skip this subscription part and directly go to the website or see what it has to offer us. So I'm gonna let the website load. Meanwhile, I'll sip my coffee. So in a nutshell, or you'll see the design is much simpler at the top. If you see, if you're interested in the international news stories, you have world, US politics, uh, the New York, especially business, opinion, tech, science, health, sports, arts, books, style, food, travel, magazine, um, real estate, and videos. So it is quite easy. So front page is less cluttered. And it is divided into different tiles, if you see. So let's see, I'm only interested in videos. So it's very easy for me to find all the relevant news videos in this section. Uh, I don't know whether it will open it or not. Let's see. So yes, there are videos on this section. Military announces a takeover in Burkina Faso. So there are only videos on this page. So in that way, let's say if you are interested in something else like sports, so you will find everything regarding sports on this page, starting from the most important story. See, so it's quite easy. So that should be the aim for every news editor for the web that you make uh, your stories quite easy. So that's it guys for today. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself and see you on uh, Friday in next class. Thank you very much.